Well, welcome back everyone. So this video is about the stretch of coastline that we covered going back to August, September and into October of 2020 and uh, the trip we did between Broome and Exmouth. So this leg of our trip was just over 1,700 kilometres and we stopped in at places like Barn Hill Station and a plane station, Pardu Station, down to Marble Bar, back to the coast again, 40 mile beach, up to Onslow and then eventually into Exmouth. So quite a lot of coastline to cover there, really great places to see, so sit back and relax and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, we're back at Barn Hill. Just left Broome this morning, so it's the 14th of August. And uh, we're slowly making our way south again. Heading home, which is a bit sad. Still we've got a fair bit of time to go yet. So Barn Hill, our first stop on our southern trek. Decided we'd come back here, only had one night here previously, so I uh, thought we'd come back, spend a couple of nights and just explore a little bit more. And it is still beautiful. Look at these rocks. Just stunning. Look at the um, amazing formations in these rocks. Incredible. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a, uh, it's like an osprey's nest up on the top of this rock. There's a little osprey sitting up there in it at the moment. So we're on the um, southern end of Barn Hill, sort of walked down past the first couple of cliff face faces and just kept going, so probably a kilometre or so south of uh, Barn Hill. It's just beautiful down here. We're almost there. Cocky's up on the rocks up there. Oyster catchers are not happy with us. Just do the gannets. Looks like it might be a bit of a gannet nesting spot. Let's check out their frogs. So it was an amazing walk and absolutely worth doing if you get the opportunity and you're in uh, Barn Hill. Next morning we got up early and took our chairs down to the cliff top and uh, sat down there with a coffee and did a bit of whale watching which was fantastic, plenty of whales moving down the coast. And then we decided we'd double up on the walking and uh, head up to the Eco Resort which is uh, north of Barn Hill, about 7.8 kilometres north and uh, we'll show you a little bit of that walk as well. Another fantastic walk. So day two of uh, trip two to Barn Hill. So we're just doing a walk now heading north up towards the Eco Resort. It's about eight kilometers one way, we've just been told. So it's a fair old hike. But uh, yeah. just on the rocks. How gorgeous is it? So we're about four kilometers up. Four kilometres to go. We'll see how far we can get across the top of the rocks here. <laughs> you should see the rocks up here, the beautiful textures in the rocks, patterns in the rocks. Another bit of rock porn. Some stunning rocks around here. Some of the patterns in that.
Well, we made it. There's the eco resort up there. Took us about two and a half hours to get here. Nine, ten, nine, ten one. one and a half hours. One and a half hours to get here. So they say it's about eight kilometres, but it can't be. It only took us an hour and a half, probably closer to six. Who cares? Anyway, hopefully they take a credit card here. We can uh, F post ourselves a coffee or a cool drink. Really need one now. It's quite big. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's in a beautiful bay. Okay, Let's see if we can get ourselves a coffee. Just wait for the traffic to go past. Another one. Here's the rewards for effort at the Eco Beach Resort. By the pool with a coffee and a drink of water. Okay, that's it. Had a coffee, really nice. Had a wander around the Echo Beach Resort. And now we're uh, heading home. Seven and a half K we worked out of this. Took us uh, an hour and a half to get here, hopefully an hour and a half to get back. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty specky spot. up here. Might have to wade this one. <laughs> We're able to get around the uh, the rocks this, this afternoon. The tide's a little bit lower. This morning when we came up this way we uh, had to climb up through the hole in the rocks up here get us up onto the top that massive caves just on the other side of that they just don't quite line up these two caves anyway we're almost there home stretch it's about three and a half k from here to uh, Barn Hill. What a magnificent walk. It's just been absolutely spectacular. There you go. It's a little bit hard to see the difference between Lisa's tan colouring and the red earth behind her. This is uh, Barn Hill, clifftop caravan sites. This is the road down to the, uh, to the beach. So that was Barn Hill. We absolutely loved our stay here. It's a uh, place that gets a bit of mixed reviews for some reason, but there's more to it than just the park, the caravan park. Get down on the beach and go for a walk. If you're into that sort of thing, you will absolutely thoroughly enjoy those walks, both north and south. Trick is to do it at low tide. You can get around the headlands without too many problems, but even if the tide's in, you can still clamber back up over the top of the rocks and then down again onto the beach and keep going. But it is beautiful, stunning. The rock formations are just amazing. So uh, make sure you don't go past Barn Hill. It's a beautiful place. Next place we visited was Anna Plain Station, as well as being a family run working cattle station, just under a million acres in size and running up to about 20,000 head of cattle. Anna Plains has a very interesting history with links to international ballistic missile developments post World War II. In 1958, a military airbase was established only a few kilometres from the location of the current Anna Plain Station homestead. The base was used to monitor the accuracy of British Blue Streak rockets test fired from the Woomera test site in South Australia that would come back to Earth in the region of Outer Plains. Part of the base was also a significant airstrip, and you'll see a bit of that in the video. The base was decommissioned in 1964 and dismantled, but there are still some remains left on the site. Also in 1999, the Department of Defence test fired a missile from the site on Anna Plains in conjunction with the development of the Australian Jindalee Over the Horizon radar project. So some great history surrounds the station. The campsite is only small but right in the middle of the station action. There's also easy access to 80 Mile Beach with great fishing and a terrific natural hot spring spa only a few minutes from the camp. So I hope you enjoy this little glimpse of Anna Plains Station. So here we are, Anna Plains, at the homestead. 
a uh, well-kept secret apparently. We uh, found out from uh, Ali and uh, Glenn who stayed here, the guys, the Lotus guys, or half of the Lotus guys. <laughs> um, so they let us know about this place, said it was worth a visit. So uh, we'll check in here. Looks like there's probably a dozen vans or so here. So we'll check in and uh, have a look. There's also a little stage over there. I believe they had a concert on Saturday night, so we missed it, unfortunately. Looks like there's a stage set up there. Anyway, Anna Plains. So Anna Plains is about uh, 400 kilometers north of 80 Mile Beach Caravan Park, and about 120 kilometers south of Barn Hill, which is about 80 kilometers south of Broome, so we're about 200 kilometers south of Broome. So we've been down here fishing for a couple of hours. Look at the uh, little pop-eyed mullet in the water here. There's no shortage of bait here, look at that. They are thick in the water. It's incredible. So, the threadies are pat uh, uh, patrolling, chewing on them. We managed to get one, which we'll show you shortly. But uh, the guys just up the beach here just landed a monster. Would have to be over a metre. Absolute cracker. So there's a few around, which is good news. But uh, Lisa's trying hard to nail one. We're just using, um, believe it or not, using um, Halco twisties. That's what the guys are uh, catching them with. So. Um, Try our luck. Tide's turned, it's well and truly on the way out now. It's probably uh, only another 15 minutes or so to go. There's also some great big sharks patrolling up and down the beach here as well. When I say great big, probably just over a metre long, a metre and a half, in uh, ankle deep water, which has been a little bit exciting when they show up right at your feet. Anyway, it's been a nice morning. Just have a few more casts and then uh, it might be time to uh, fill it out thready and head home for lunch. So this is pretty cool. This is the uh, Anna Plains runway built just before the Second World War, I believe. And it was used, uh, built by the British. And uh, it was used to bring in supplies when they were doing uh, rocket testing prior to the Second World War. It's a uh, hell of a runway. It's gotta be a couple of kilometers long. We're just about in the middle of it. You can just see the uh, northern end there. Oh, sorry, the western end. That's looking east. So they used to uh, do missile testing here. It was all part and parcel of the Woomera missile range. And uh, this section here was also used, or anaplanes was also used. I'll find a bit more information out about it, but um, yeah. So uh, apparently the British had a uh, missile testing site here at anaplanes. Who'd have guessed? Afternoon here, day two, Anna Plains. What a beautiful afternoon. It's just been gorgeous today. Down on the beach for a swim and a fish. Managed to actually get a fish. That was a pleasant surprise. So, uh, just sort of come and get this the classic, classic farming shot. Cattle truck here with the hay bales in the background. How gorgeous is that? Stop moving, so I stop shaking.
Okay, so here we are on the beach at Anna Plains. Very low tide out there. I think low tide's about six o'clock, so I've still got a couple of hours to go out yet. In fact, almost three hours to go out yet. But there ain't much water there. So Anna Plains is uh, at the northern end of 80 Mile Beach and um, about 130 kilometres south of Barn Hill, which is about 80 kilometres south of Broome, so a couple of hundred kilometres south of Broome. And um, you're not allowed to collect shells here, which uh, is a shame because there are some absolute crackers. Just getting these. these out of the way of the car tires. <laughs> Rescuing them. They are beautiful, aren't they? So we just want to go for a drive up the beach. Apparently you can go about 20k up the beach this way. So I'm just going to have a poke up there. There's a fairly strong westerly breeze blowing up the coast. Big cold pressure system going through Perth today. So we're just getting the uh, spin off from that. Anyway, we'll go for a bit of a drive. Have a look. I reckon there's some uh, good fishing to be had here. So we might put that to the test in a couple of days. But wow, look at that. Big shells everywhere. It's just amazing. So we're at the spa pool at Anna Plains. It's a uh, natural artesian spring. Lisa's just got to jump in there and uh, turn the tap on. Just lift it, lift it up. Just take the weight off it and lift it and then slide it forward. There we go. All right, taps on. <laughs> Some deck chairs. the drinks before we started so we're gonna to have to st struggle back to the car in the oh, cool breeze all the way back over there it's beautiful nice and warm it's got to be 34 or something like that when you think of the pool at 28 34 35 degrees it's beautiful anyway and a plains just a quick pan around of the um Caravan Park. Looks like they'll probably get about maybe 20 vans in here. Little house in the middle there is the uh, home of the owner. 90 year old fella. Still lives here. His uh, son and daughter-in-law now managing the place. Looks like a weird park just in behind us is the uh, staff quarters. Great spot. And a plains. Okay, next stop, Padu Station, and another real surprise. We really enjoyed our stay here, and we're staying just for one night, end up staying for three. So have a look at this, Padu Station. Just looking out across the plains here. There's a fair bit of tide to come in. I hope I got these tides right.
So we're just down here on the banks of Hardu Creek, having a fish. And uh, just awaiting the arrival of a small visitor. Just down here. A snake of some sort. Not sure exactly what sort of snake it is, but hopefully a very non-aggressive and non-venomous one. Okay, Padu Station, just on our way out now, heading down towards Marble Bar. Nice little stay there, actually, we'll come back here. Didn't, uh, we only had a couple of days, didn't really get to explore everything there was to see. So, uh, spent a bit of time fishing, not a lot of time catching. But anyway, it's a great little stay, Padu Station. Certainly uh, back on the list again to come back and visit at a later date. Go Marble Bar, here we come. Here we are, Marble Bar. We're at Marble Bar Pool. So it's just been, um, so it's named after the seam of marble that they thought was marble. It's actually Jasper, turns out. And uh, so what they say to do is come out, bring a bucket, and um, splash some water on the rocks, which we've done. And it really does bring the color out of the rocks. really quite pretty. Lisa is really impressed. <laughs> so Do it again? <laughs> I think so. Sounds cute. Just can't wait for our beer up at the uh, Ironclad Hotel tonight. That should be good. And that's the creek. It is, it's quite pretty. No, it is really quite pretty. Is it worth coming all the way out here for? Yeah, I'm here. Google it. Okay, in all fairness, it was 40 degrees right at the end of the dry season, so it wasn't at its best. Uh, we went to, ventured down to Dooling Gorge just to have a look as well. There's a couple of photos here of, uh, of that spot, and that was really quite pretty. So after Marble Bar, we headed north back to the coast and uh, ended up at 40 Mile, which is just out of Karatha, about 40 kilometres out of Karatha. So we had three nights there. You can get down on the beach at 40 Mile, drive along the beach and do a bit of fishing, which was really great. So here's a quick glimpse of 40 Mile. It's a uh, foggy old start to the morning down here at 40 Mile. Just a very low sea fog. It's our last day here today, unfortunately. We're going to head off to Onslow this morning. Once we packed up and had a cup of tea. But we've had a great time here. It's a nice spot. Certainly uh, a lot more fun than Cleaverville was. At least here you can get down and drive on the beach and you can go for a swim. And the fishing's pretty good, apparently. But uh, no, it's been great. 40 miles, certainly uh, not a bad spot at all the fog lifts. So we we're up at 40 mile around the end of August, early September, I think it was around about the 6th of September we were there, and the wildflowers in the Pilbara were all just starting to burst into life. We saw heaps of these sturt desert peas on the roadside, they were just gorgeous. We also stumbled across a little memorial in the mangroves at 40 Mile to Bill and Beryl. A uh, pair of them obviously caught a few muddies over the years between the two of them. But anyway, 40 Mile was a great spot. Beautiful beach, great swimming, nice driving along the beach, good fishing. Certainly worth a visit. 
next stop, Onslow, but first, just south of Onslow, you'll find the remains of the original town site at the mouth of the Ashburton River. The most prominent ruins here are the stone remains of the jail, courthouse and police station. The town was gazetted in 1885 to serve as the port exporting wool from the sheep stations of the Pilbara and also as the home of the Pearling Fleet working the Exmouth Gulf. From the onset, the location of the port town created difficulties. During the wet season, the Ashburton River would flood, cutting off the town. It also silted up the river mouth, creating issues for boats trying to access the port town. So after 40 years of cyclones and floods isolating the town, finally it got the best of them, and in 1925 the whole town was re relocated 18 kilometres away at Beaton Point, the site of the existing town of Onslow. So uh, here we are at Four Mile, Four Mile Creek in Onslow. Lovely little creek system here. We've been down here for a couple of hours, had lots of bites, mostly from sand flies, but uh, we've had a few brim, a uh, couple of flatties. What else? That's about it. Brim, flatties. Plenty of garfish in the water here. But uh, we're just starting to get a little bit nervous. The uh, tide is coming in fairly rapidly. So uh, we might just have another 10 minutes or so here and then uh, we might have to run for it, I think, Lise. Did you get a bite or was that just a splash? Hasn't had much luck today, which is a bit unusual. Normally, Lisa's the one cleaning up, and I'm the one not having much luck. But um, yeah. see, there when we arrived, there's no water here at all. It was uh, all bone dry, but it's uh, encroaching quite quickly. Oh, hang on, we're on. What you got? Nice little brim. There's been quite a few of these. Bad little size, pan size, but we don't know whether they're, uh, they're worth the effort or not. Anyway, put up a great fight. There's been plenty of these little buggers around. But uh, Four Mile Creek, I'll say, it's a uh, nice little spot. Get down here at low tide and fish the incoming tide, and um, make sure you get out before the uh, before the water gets you. Hopefully, we can do that. So, the one thing that Onslow is known for more than its sand flies is its salt. There's the huge piles of salt over there on the uh, on the lakes, the Onslow Salt Mining Company, or whatever they're called. So there we go. Just had a chat to a sparky down on the beach, works for the salt company, and uh, he said they're having a shutdown for the next couple of weeks, replacing a switchboard out in the end of the jetty. Anyway, we're heading back to the caravan park for a bit of lunch. No fish won't be fish. Sausages again, although sausages were pretty good actually. So we're on our way out of Onslow. Had a great stay in Onslow, really enjoyed it there. But uh, just pulled up, had a look at the uh, wildflowers which are all starting to um, burst into bloom along the side of the road. And uh, yeah, these are pretty cute. It's a uh, peak hour in Onslow, but anyway it's over now. So yeah, tons of wildflowers, it's been really beautiful all the way through the Pilbara, everything's starting to burst into life, but uh, this is really gorgeous here. Okay, final stop for this leg of the trip was the Kurrajong campsite in the Cape Range National Park in Exmouth. Great campsite, really well looked after by the camp host. Also has great beaches there for swimming and fishing. And about a kilometre off the beach, a beautiful snorkeling spot I paddled out to one day. So you'll see a bit of that coming up shortly as well. We also had a paddle up Yardi Creek one windy afternoon, actually talking about the wind. September, October is the start of the windy season in Northwest WA. You may have seen my uh, Ballara Station video, give you an example of how good the wind is. So if you're heading up towards Exmouth, make sure you do it before the end of September. Unless of course you're into windsurfing or kite surfing, then you'll love it up here at that time of the year. But anyway, Courage On Campsite in the Cape Range National Park. I hope you enjoy it. Creek. Windy old day on the coast, so we thought we'd uh, 
pump up the subs and uh, go for a paddle up Yardie. It's quite nice out of the breeze. It's lovely here. So Yardie Creek's at the very southern end of the Cape Range National Park and if you're looking for something to do on a windy day there's a really nice walk that runs up along the side of the gorge or you can do like we did. Um, jump on your stand-up paddle boards or your kayaks and uh, paddled up to the end of the gorge. It's about three kilometres return. So if you're looking for something to do on a windy day it's not a bad option at all. I thought I'd just come out and have a look and see if I could find the mysterious deep blue hole that uh, a couple of guys were talking about. I reckon the snorkeling there is sensational. So, a little bit of a nor westerly blowing this morning. So, uh, it's going to blow me back to the beach somewhere. Anyway, we'll have a look around. Water is beautiful out here today, as you can see. So, seen a big shark out here this morning. Probably about three metres long, looks like a big lemon shark. So um, hopefully they don't bite very hard. Anyway, I'll uh, get out here a bit further and see if I can find this uh, blue hole. So we found the blue hole <laughs> right here on the edge of the reef. It looks amazing. So I'm just waiting for the wave to ease a bit and I'll uh, slip over the side and have a look. But it does look beautiful. Beautiful. But the tide's getting a bit low. Might get back across the top of the reef before it gets a bit too shallow. So just right on the edge of the of the reef. What are we about 600 meters offshore, 500 meters offshore? That is just spectacular. One last little look. <laughs> Okay, better get in, Lisa will be worried. So, uh, well, that was worth a paddle. Let's see if we can get out tomorrow, so we can convince Lisa to come out and have a look at this. That is stunning. Catch you later. So that's a wrap, and that pretty well ends our uh, trip north. Fantastic adventure. We did about 17,500 kilometres. 
and uh, finished up with uh, a couple of weeks worth of work at Ballara Station at the bottom of the Exmouth Gulf. And while we're there, Lisa got a phone call from her mum saying she'd better get home. Lisa's dad had been cooked for a while, so she took off and went home and I finished up at Ballara and then uh, slowly made my way back to Perth as well. Fantastic trip and uh, we can't wait to get back on the road again. Hopefully we'll be back on the road around March sometime and uh, the plan is to do the southwest corner of Western Australia and then from there head across into South Australia and hopefully up to the Northern Territory for, uh, for the winter and then after that who knows. It really depends on how COVID's travelling around uh, Australia at that stage of the game. Just want to say a big thanks to the folks that um, have sent messages to us on uh, YouTube and commented on the videos and asked a few questions and really appreciate some of the kind words that people have had to say about the vids. Really enjoyed doing them and uh, learning a lot about uh, putting these things together. So I really hope you're enjoying them. It's been uh, great fun putting them together. So on behalf of Lisa and myself, big thanks again to everyone, all the subscribers, everyone that's uh, watched our videos through the year. And uh, hopefully you'll join us again as we head south and do our next adventure in South Australia and Northern Territory. So cheers, we'll see you then. Catch you later.